Um, this is my uh, little nesting cup, little GSI cup, stainless steel. These are fantastic. As you can see, I've cooked many, many meals in the fire with this. Um, they just work. They're great. Um, they work really well with the gloves because I can tell you what, if you grab this handle when it's been in the fire, it'll brand you. Um, those gloves have saved my hands from some pretty bad burns from, from this handle before. So, Again, this is great. I can use it to purify water. I can use it to cook my food. Um, I can use it to melt snow. Um, you know, I can use it to sterilize things like bandages or whatever I need. This is great. Just a little all-purpose little you know cooking pot essentially that I keep in my pack. Doesn't weigh anything. Uh, doesn't take up any space as I, I fill it with other items. Sometimes if it's cold weather or I'm just don't want to deal with my hydration bladder, I'll bring my my stainless Nalgene, which happens to nestle directly inside of the cup as well. And this fits in my little day bag just as easily. It's a little bit bulky, a little bit heavy. So I, you know, sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. Usually if I do, it's because it's full of lemonade or, you know, something like that. Paracord, 550 cord, seven strand, you know, military parachute cord. This stuff is also invaluable. You can use that for lashing together shelters, lashing together your pack if it should happen to fall apart, injuries, um, just about anything. This is incredibly valuable stuff. I carry several hanks of it in my pocket with me at all times. And this is just extra in case I need it. I have exactly 100 feet of parachute cord here. These are four 15-foot hanks. And then here are two 20-foot hanks. I don't like to cut my paracord in the field, so I, I pre-cut it into lengths that I felt was the most useful for me. I know where every bit of this gear is in my pack. I can reach into it in the middle of the night in pitch black and by feel know where everything is and pull it out. The same goes for my paracord. The way I know that these are the 20-footers is this little tag end. I've got a knot tied in the end right there. So just by feel, I know that this is a 20-foot piece of cord should I need it in the dark. Speaking of the dark, here's my little headlamp. These things are great. Um, you know, hands-free. I go to sleep wearing it when I'm camping, so if I have to, something goes bump in the night, I can just, you know, you know, turn it on right there and see what's going on. One time, I thought I could get away without using my headlamp. So I, you know, because it was nice and bright moonlight, I found a nice log and leaned myself up against it and decided to, to do my business and I felt something pinch me in the hip. Well it turns out I was leaning up against an ant's nest. Uh, and uh, yeah, they weren't too pleased with me. Uh, you know, <laughs> raining down horror upon their little colony. It, it's nice to have a headlamp and, 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 and they're very, very convenient. Got a little hand sanitizer and some teepee. Uh, this stuff is, you know, again very useful. It's much more convenient than finding leaves or grass or whatever. I'm not quite man enough to use an ass rag, so I I go with the toilet paper and the and the and the and the, the hand sanitizer. This is my little hand trowel. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, I can dig a hole with my Bowie knife." Well, great. You know, do that and then spend an hour re repairing the edge. It's nice to have the proper tool for the job. If I got to dig a hole, I got a tool to dig a hole with. Here's another item that I carry in my pack. I carry it inside of my little mug. Um, this is one of those pocket chainsaws. There's a couple different varieties on the market, and I'm sure they all work great. You know those wire saws that you see? I wouldn't waste my money on them. I've had several, and they get hot, they bind, they break. They're pretty much worthless. My personal preference, don't even bother with them. I found that these chainsaws, these little pocket chainsaws, are really work well. They do. Um, they take some effort, but they get the job done. Back to the whole idea where people make these very extravagant, nice little kits and they don't actually test them out. When I first brought this out into the woods, um, it had these little metal hooks. You put your finger through or another stick through to pull it. One, the hooks were incredibly uncomfortable. And number two, they broke. The weld on them failed and they snapped. And I'm sure that's not the case for all of them, but for my saw, it snapped. It broke. Um, so when I get went home, I made these. It's just one inch webbing that I sewed together with a heavy duty fishing swivel. You know, it's got the little wire snap there and that swivel is rated at 200 pounds. So, you know, pretty much any force I'm going to put on this saw, this thing can take. And this is a lot more comfortable on my fingers to be able to hold and to be able to pull. And again, it's got, you know, plenty of space on the inside that I can put a stick through it to make a nicer handle. Again, if you're going to make a little survival kit, test it out. Even better, like I said, this is my camping equipment. This is what I take with me and I use on a regular basis when I'm camping. I use it all the time. So I'm, I'm very intimately familiar with the stuff that I have 
with me. I'm not going to open up my little survival kit and be surprised by what's in there or realize I don't know how to use it or have things break on me unexpectedly. One thing I forgot, this little bag that's attached to my pack, I should open it and show you what's in there. Okay, that's all of it. And I have my little bag that sits on the bottom of my pack. Here I have my, basically my toiletries. I've got, you know, some toothpaste, toothbrush, some triple antibiotic. I have a little thing of dental floss, which also serves as sewing string or snare wire or whatever you need. I have a nail clipper, because if your nails get long, the last thing you want to do in the bush is chew them off. Who knows what's caked underneath there. I have a right in the rain, a little, uh, little spiral bound notebook, and a mechanical pencil. Why a mechanical pencil, you say? Because they don't freeze like pens can. So it's great for journaling, for leaving notes, for writing down coordinates. I mean, it's just great to have a way of being able to write things down, even if it's your last will and testament. In addition to my little toiletries here that I described, uh, am I right in the rain, my little uh, pencil there, I have my med kit. Now, I don't want to take everything out. It's just kind of a pain. But I'll tell you what's in it. I have some ibuprofen. And I have some Benadryl, which is an antihistamine, and I also have some Claritin-D. I suffer from hay fever, um, so when the sagebrush is in bloom, I get in sneezing fits, I can be miserable. But more importantly, one of the big medical emergencies that you may, that are fairly prevalent when people are out, you know, hiking or camping, is they get stung by, a, by an insect, or they, they run into a plant that they're, that they're allergic to, or even something like poison ivy and so on. And if somebody goes into anaphylactic shock, you can have a life a life-threatening situation very, very quickly. These antihistamines are great because they'll they'll slow that down. They can keep a person's airway open and you know potentially save a life. I've also got these little silver uh, tweezers. I've also got some some sanitary or, or saline eye wash in the little tiny uh, plastic capsules. I have super glue for sealing up small wounds. I've got moleskin and I have steri strips, which are little. Uh, they take the places of stitches. It's just a little tape that can use, be used to pull a wound closed. From the research I've done, doing sutures, actually stitches on yourself in the field is a risky endeavor if you don't know what you're doing. And even if you do, um, if you're outside of a sterile environment, you're inoculating yourself with all sorts of bacteria every time you push that needle through your skin. Um, sometimes people get lucky and it's great. Other times, I, it's not worth it. Best thing is, is just, you know, direct pressure, keep it clean. You don't want to take chances. Uh, and then I have my utility and repair kit right here. This is my sewing kit. It's kind of hard to see. I'll hold it up a little bit. Um, it's a 5 millimeter lead pencil, you know, the, the pencil lead container. I've got it full of needles and safety needles. I've got some heavier wax that wrapped around the outside. I have a heavy sewing needle and a curved needle, you know, held together with some rubber bands on the outside. This is great for keeping track of your needles. Right here, I have... Um, let me see if I can get one of them out. Boop. A couple bobbins with heavy-duty upholstery uh, thread on them. And they're packed inside of this little leather collar. Now what this is, is I put it over my finger like so. And that becomes um, a thimble. So that when I'm sewing something, I put the back of the needle against that and push it through the fabric. You know, if you're you know repairing your pack or a tent or whatever. And it keeps the needle from poking a hole through your finger. So this is, again, one of my own little inventions. And I use it quite often. And uh, finally, this is just a cap for my water bladder in case I want to seal it off and take the hose off. And these are great. I got these from Light My Fire. They're real cheap. And basically, you know, you find a stick, you know, even if it's all gnarled, as long as part of it's the right diameter, you can whittle it down with your knife. You stick it through there and it locks in place. And now I have a nice little metal tines for cooking marshmallows, cooking fish, sausage, whatever, over the fire, even if I can't find a suitable stick that I can show.